to the Catholic League's Bill Donahue, who sees a pattern here. Bill, what do you make of all this? Well, you know, yesterday I said that uh, Hillary Clinton, while she was uh, implicated in one way, she's not uh, morally culpable because John Podesta was involved in an exchange, even though he didn't participate verbally, he was involved, although not incredibly, in some kind of an exchange about anti-Catholic remarks. You just played them accurately. But today I'm calling for him to be canned. Now we have a much, much more serious development. Now we have John Podesta in conversation with Sandy Newman, a left-wing uh, uh, fellow traveler, so to speak, arguing that we need a revolution within the Catholic Church, to which Podesta says, yes, I've been working on it. That's why we created the Catholics United and Catholics Alliance in the common, for the common good. In other words, these two faux phony dissident Catholic organizations, which I've been at war with for years, funded by George Soros, were created by John Podesta for the purpose of being like termites to eat away at the foundation of the Catholic Church. Here's the pattern. Soros provides the money. The point man running offense is Podesta. Catholics United does the dirty work along with Catholics and Alliance for the Common Good. And one more thing, Neil. Catholics United, back in, in 2008, leaked uh, documents over to CNN when I went on television with them that night to try and get me kicked off the air because I was too harsh on the Democrats. One month later, right around Thanksgiving of 2008, those same documents, which, by the way, somebody at CNN was gracious enough to leak them to me. That's why I knew them. I get, I get uh, a summons from the uh, IRS saying that I'm under investigation because I'm too critical violating the IRS code. It was strikingly simil similar. I had the documents. It was, in fact, George Soros' money behind Catholics United with Chris Corzin, who contacted CNN, trying to get me kicked off the well, air. Well, the which bottom I don't line is that. it's weird, but back to this. But and it, what, what's, what's, true in, what's true in a lot of the emails is their disregard, uh, even though they're not getting into the, the weeds here, their disregard for conservative Catholics versus more liberal Catholics, uh, quoting uh, from, from these emails, many of the most powerful elements of the conservative movement are all Catholic, many are converts from uh, think tanks to the media and social groups. It's an amazing bastardization of the faith. They must be attracted to the systematic thought and severely backwards gender relations, they must be totally unaware of Christian democracy. And I was thinking to myself as I was reading that, what if they were saying that of the Muslim faith and how M Muslim women are treated and the and, and Sharia law and all of this? And I'm just thinking. Man, oh man, that would be slightly different. Wouldn't that would get certainly slightly different coverage. I mean, you talk about male clergy, too. You look at Orthodox Jews, you look at uh, Mormons, you look at uh, a lot of different religions, which, and, and a lot of them have the same idea of sexual reticence, which is taught by the Catholic Church. You know, I can put up with some stupid comments made by these people. What I can't put up with, beyond the bigotry, is when there's an integral plan setting up phony organizations to create a revolution, which is their term, within the Catholic Church. This is far more serious. John Podesta has to go. Hillary Clinton is now implicated. That's her campaign manager. No other religion would put up with this, and Catholics aren't either. But it's